Hi everyone, Fidu here, here and today's video we're going to have a look at the recent patch notes for this month's FNN news. In my last video we covered only a small selection of areas that Respawn provided in their latest FNN, but now they've released the full patch notes for this month's update with a few surprising changes added in as well. So like always let's get straight into the main topic. To start things off, the new weapon skin will cost a total of $4.99 or £3.70 for those in the UK with the Halloween skins being limited edition till the 28th of November. So, once they're gone, they're gone. So it's advisable to either purchase them now, or not bother, but I highly doubt they'll be released ever again. We will also be getting two new Halloween call signs that will only cost around 1,500 in-game credits. Not sure what they look like just of yet, but I have a feeling that could be something very popular that I can see many of us going around and wearing, like usual. For the weapon changes, Respawn have increased the view kick and hip fire spread for the R201, and R202, which will hopefully make the weapons less dominant in close range fights. The flatline received a reduced recoil buff, meaning it will be, hopefully, be able to fire at better ranges and be a bit more consistent, since the recoil weapon is really ridiculous to control compared to all the other weapons. And it's understandable, since the weapon is a hard hitting for auto rifle, but the recoil shouldn't be that strong just for a assault rifle. Our grenades now have the ability to stick onto surfaces and detonate after 75 seconds. This is very new and odd to see happen to the art grenades since they were originally nerfed from having two in the slot and now back down to one. Whether this will change how the art grenades act against titans and players alike is anyone's guess until the patch drops. But it doesn't sound that bad just by reading it but like always things on paper don't always come out to be the best when released. Now probably the most oddest update we've seen is the Women Elite and the Mozambique being used as primaries now rather than secondaries. Now I don't know if we could still use a primary Mozambique and a secondary Mozambique, if we could that would be pretty damn amazing, but I've got a feeling it's probably going to be either when I only have one selection. So if I choose the Wingman Elite for my main primary weapon, I'm probably going to be able to use it only in my main primary slot, not in two slots at the same time. But for the changes, the Mozambique is now an automatic with increased 2 fire rate and an extra 2 more shots in the magazine, while the Wingman Elite received a damage and weapon magazine increase. Now, if both these weapons are balanced correctly and not too OP, I can see all the other secondaries receiving the same treatment in the near future, which I'm kinda excited for, as it might change up some of the meta in certain weapons. Might. We still have other weapons that are quite dominant in game, so it might basically show a few new differences to where players, instead of players always go with the same common weapon, players will be actually using other weapons. For example, like the EPG was not a weapon that was commonly used, but now EPG and even the Cold War are weapons that are being commonly used by all types of players, new and old. Now pilot turrets have now also received a buff to their health, so they can last a bit longer in fights. However, they take more damage from pilot's weapons such as ordnances, ATs, primaries and grenadier weapons. I don't know how powerful they're going to make them, I just hope they're not too powerful to the point of where I have to, wait, I have to use up all my magazine to take out one placement. One thing I have noticed is that when you put down a pilot sentry, most of the pilot sentries aren't really that powerful, as in they don't take out pilots really quickly like they used to before, and that's fine because they used to be quite broken, but they also don't last very long. So I'm hoping now with the increase the health, they can actually take on a big group of pilots without being too broken, but also giving the other players that are fighting against these sentries a chance to fight back and at least have a chance to either weaken it to the point of where another teammate can come in and destroy it, or to the point of where they can destroy it but they end up dying in the process. Something that makes it a bit more fairer, if you understand. Now for Titan updates, we only see one update for a Titan, which is quite odd because usually they do at least a bunch of Titan updates and nerves and changes. But for this case here, Northstar has received a slight buff to movement speed when hovering and an increased speed for her cluster missiles. Now this change might make Viper Thrusters more used in PvP with a slight buff added in now, meaning that you can probably move on really quickly in the air while using your thrusters. But I don't know. I might test it out and see if it's something that's viable and maybe make a loadout based on it. If not, then it's not really worth well, it's not really that you it's not really that worthwhile when you look at it. For modes, these are the following that have been updated. Attrition score limit has been increased to 650 minutes, with its time limit also being increased to 50 minutes. They've also adjusted AI compositions, which probably means location they spawn to and where they move to. 
And Reapers are now worth 3 points. This seems quite good in many ways because Attrition is one of the most popular game modes in Type 40 at the moment. And considering that most of and considering that most of the other game modes aren't really that popular with many players, since most players always go to attrition. I can see this working out very well, where it's gonna probably increase the overall total number of players in attrition by probably tenfold now. Even though the game is quite old, I can see attrition is still going on and having a strong player base with a small update that's been introduced. For frontier defense, now art traps cost around six hundred and fifty dollars to purchase, which is a bit okay, but it's a bit far out there when you think about it. And batteries now cost around four hundred dollars, which is also you know, a bit out there. And players that join into the match in progress will now be given money for each wave completed. Which is also quite nice because in many cases when I spawn into a match that's either in stage 4 or even stage 3, I don't have enough funds to go ahead and purchase the necessary equipment I need to defend myself. Especially in normal or mastery mode. Respawn have also made it so that players are now invulnerable to attacks for 5 seconds once they drop out the dropship. Something that I honestly welcome very much because it's incredibly annoying when you die and then you come back, you drop off and then you die again because of a silly tip mine that's basically waiting for you or just jumped up the moment you dropped out. Now with that hopefully fixed, now I can actually survive many of my fights, especially in hard mood. And also a bug has been fixed so that art traps disappear after a loss rather than staying until the next match. I didn't typically think that was a bug to begin with, I thought that was something that was just, you know, every time you lost a certain round, it would generally stay in the game like so. The fact that this was considered a bug was, well, this was something that's been in for quite a while, so I'm hoping that this doesn't really change how much the end game content will be when it comes down to finding enemies and bosses, because sometimes some of these placements were really needed in really tough situations. Now private matches, I've also received an update for once, where Frontier Defense in private matches now allow players to earn Aegis XP, which is a very welcoming gift for those that want to try out solo play for Frontier Defense. It's also given me an idea for a gamer that can create out of this, but this is something I'm going to keep quite low until I get this kind of finalised and see if it works out properly first. If it works out with my favour, then I'll go ahead and upload it for you guys, and make it a bit snazzy. If not, then I'll probably just you know, ever bother talking about it ever again. Now the Dreaded Reapers have received a buff and a nerf, which is only favourable towards the pilots more. Now for example, they take more damage from primary, secondary, ATs and ordinances, while they received a buff to their health from 3000 to 3500. They've also received an increase in accuracy for their projectiles, making them slightly more deadlier up against titans and probably more of a pain for pilots now. But now they also dodge less, so this makes it a little bit more easier and less aggravating for us when it comes down to dealing with them in close range or long range engagements. I'm not 100% sure just of yet whether this is good or not, but I'm gonna wait till the patch drops and then I'm gonna test it out and see just how badly the Reapers are. In many ways it could be really good, or in many ways it could be just outright not a needed buff whatsoever for them. We also receive a tactical change with the patch focusing on three popular classes within the game with Grapple now being a 1 charge rather than a 2 charge, Hollow Pilot cooldown decreased to 12.5 seconds from 16.6 .6 seconds, and Pulse Blade cooldown decreased to 25 seconds from 40 seconds, and the Pulse Duration is decreased to 4.5 seconds from 6 seconds. Sounds pretty reasonable, and doesn't sound that broken or unfair. However, I'm not sure how I feel about the nerf for Grapple since they're very effective in all content and engagements. So having two was never really a problem, but reducing it down to one slot doesn't make much sense. And instead of me rambling on and on about how this shouldn't be put into the game and how this should be changed and such, I'll save that for another video. But personally for me, I think that this should be taken off, because grapples are not that bad. And for them to be nerfed down to just one slot, it really makes no sense. Even like even if I was a developer, I wouldn't probably not understand why someone like this, that has literally only a small advantage in game that many players can use, would be nerfed. So now, let's talk about the new feature modes that have been officially announced by Respawn. They sound pretty crazy, and I can't genuinely wait to see how the community, and generally me, will take on this, and I'm hoping that in the near future they carry on with updating us with 
new game modes that are not too much effort but something they can just quickly put together and release here and there. So they are as followed. Tactical attrition. All tactical cooldowns are reset to full charge when killing an enemy pilot. Attack on Titanfall. Everyone has three charges with grapple. The Great Bamboozle. Everyone has holler pilot. Now, tactical attrition sounds pretty good and such. I don't know how good this would be. I know that top players that are able to net kills quite easily could probably you know spam their abilities over and over again and i can see it's been really chaotic for many players that enjoy this type of content attack on titan 4 is i'll probably say is a running meme right there and sounds quite amazing as well the fact that everyone has three charges for grapple seems like seems like quite fun to be honest now the only thing i don't now the only thing i don't know about this is will we have preset classes for this as in when you go into the lobby Will we all have to play as grapple for this to work? Or will there just be that we can go ahead and use whatever pilot that we wanted to, uh, but our tactical slot will be changed to grapple? Because if that's the case, then there's no major problem from that. But if it's the latter, then I could probably see a few issues here and there. You're basically forcing everyone to use a specific class. But I'm not sure how a respawn system is designed around this. And lastly, the Great Bamboozle. Everyone has a holler pilot. This is something that has been going on for quite a long time, with many videos from the community showing how to absolutely maximize the chaotic nature of a holler pilot. So, the fact that everyone can go ahead now and use holler pilot and just throw out their clones everywhere, I can see that this is going to be really chaotic and a popular game mode. And lastly, a few bug fixes. Respawn has fixed a bug with Tones Park of War, taking more damage when aiming at Titan behind it. Pilot Loadout Menu will now properly display weapon skin name in description area. Player call sign cards in the Frontier Defense will update to the proper difficulty in network interface. And for the PC, the fixed highlights appear and cut off when, su when super sampling is enabled. And there you have it, a full and hefty list of all the updates being added into the game for Tuesday. Some of the things listed are quite nice and welcoming, while others are very debatable. But depending on how things play out, we could see them get changed down the line. I say change very loosely, as Respawn doesn't tend to change certain things they add into the game, unless enough outcry is being made. So that's the end of the video, I hope you enjoyed it. If you didn't, by all means leave a like, a comment and subscribe for more. If you didn't, by all means leave a dislike, I'll look over the video and I'll see what I need to improve on in the near future. So once again everyone, thank you all for watching, and I hope to see you all again soon.